Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Let us meditate on the confession of sin. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Welcome to morning prayer. My name is Tim Brumfield, organist, choir master, and director of music here at St. Gregory's Episcopal Church in downtown Boca Raton, Florida. If you would like to follow along with me, our morning prayer service is found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 80. Once again, welcome to St. Gregory's Episcopal Church morning prayer. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout 
with for joy to the rock of our salvation. Come, let us before his presence come with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God, a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to hear His voice. Our psalm appointed for today is Psalm 49. Psalm, I'm sorry, Psalm 119, verses 49 through 72. Again, Psalm 119, verses 49 through 72. It's found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 767. Remember your word to your servant, because you have given me hope. This is my comfort in my trouble, that your promise gives me life. The proud have derided me cruelly, but I have not turned from your law. When I remember your judgments of old, O Lord, I take great comfort. I am filled with a burning rage because of the wicked who forsake your law. Your statutes have been like songs to me wherever I have lived as a stranger. I remember your name in the night, O Lord, and dwell upon your law. This is how it has been with me, because I have kept your commandments. You only are my portion, O Lord. I have promised to keep your words. I entreat you with all my heart. Be merciful to me according to your promise. I have considered my ways and turned my feet toward your decrees. I hasten and do not tarry to keep your commandments. Though the cords of the wicked entangle me, I do not forget your law. At midnight I will rise to give you thanks because of your righteous judgments. I am a companion of all who fear you and of those who keep your commandments. The earth, O Lord, is full of your love. Instruct me in your statutes. O Lord, you have dealt graciously with your servant according to your word. Teach me discernment and knowledge, for I have believed in your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. You are good, and you bring forth good. Instruct me in your statutes. The proud have smeared me with lies, but I will keep your commandments with my whole heart. Their heart is gross and fat, but my delight is in your law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. 
The law of your mouth is dearer to me than thousands in gold and silver. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading today is from the letter of Paul to the Galatians, chapter 2, verses 11 through 21. The letter of Paul to the Galatians, chapter 2, verses 11 through 21. When Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he stood self-condemned. For until certain people came from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But after they came, he drew back and kept himself separate for fear of the circumcision faction. And the other Jews joined him in this hypocrisy, so that even Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not acting consistently with the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas, before them all, if you, though a Jew, live like a Gentile and not like a Jew, how can you compel the Gentiles to live like Jews? We ourselves are Jews by birth and not Gentile sinners. Yet we know that a person is justified not by the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. And we have come to believe in Jesus Christ so that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by doing the works of the law, because no one will be justified by the works of the law. But if in our effort to be justified in Christ, we ourselves have been found to be sinners. Is Christ then a servant of sin? Certainly not. But if I build up again the very things that I once tore down, then I demonstrate that I am a transgressor. For through the law I died to the law so that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I now know and live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not nullify the grace of God, for if justification comes through the law, then Christ died for nothing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 6, verses 13 through 29. The Gospel according to Mark, chapter 6, verses 13 through 29. The disciples cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead. And for this reason, these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John bound him 
and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to set his people free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the lands of our enemies. Free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins and to the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Song of Zechariah. Let us meditate on the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. A collect for the third week in Epiphany. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior Jesus Christ and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and all the world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A prayer for guidance. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
we now come to the time of offering our own intercessions and thanksgivings. We pray for all of those who are suffering from COVID-19. We pray that they will be restored to health. We pray for all those who are caring for them, for their families, for the doctors and the nurses. We pray for the souls of all those who have passed away from this dread disease. We pray for a swift and expedient delivery of vaccines, not only in this country, but around the world. We pray for all those in our congregation who may be ill or who may have lost a loved one. We pray for this church and for its many ministries. We pray for our pastors, Father Sherman and his family, Father Thomas and his family, and for our staff. We pray that St. Gregory's will continue to be a beacon of light and hope in this world and throughout South Florida. We give thanks for all those who may be celebrating a birthday or an anniversary or some other milestone in their life. And now we pray a prayer of St. Francis. May this be our prayer for 2021. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it, it, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Almighty God, before Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. For the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. 
Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This ends our morning prayer service today. Once again, my name is Tim Brumfield, Director of Music, Choir Master and Organist here at St. Gregory's Episcopal Church in downtown Boca Raton, Florida. It has been my pleasure to have you with me this morning. I'm going to adjust the camera so that I may see you, or that you may see me, rather, and I'll pretend that I see you There we are. How is everyone this morning on this beautiful day? And uh, I just want to invite everyone to be with us later on today. Uh, Father Sherman has resumed um, Noonday Eucharist on Wednesdays. It's on the East Terrace. It's also live streamed for those of you who uh, will not attend. Um, but for those who are in town, in downtown at that time, and you would like to attend, it's safe, it's outside, uh, you will wear a mask, uh, it's socially distanced, and it's a time to be together uh, in, uh, as we begin to try to find new ways of uh, coming together once again. So again, that's Holy Eucharist, on Wednesday today, this afternoon at 12 p.m. on the East Terrace. Join us this evening at uh, 6.15 with Father Thomas and Father Sherman for a holy happy hour as they lead Bible study and wisdom class. Uh, then you will find Sam Cucci and myself at Compline uh, being shown at 9 p.m. this evening. It's a wonderful way to end your day and to have a bit of a respite and a meditation midweek. It will be followed by an organ meditation. It's a beautiful service, it's only about 30 minutes, and I invite you to be with us. So I'm going to scroll through and see, I believe I saw um, It Is Well With My Soul. Let's see if there are any others. Blessed Assurance, see that. Okay, so I'm seeing those two. Great, thank you so much. I will end with a medley, and I hope to see you next week, and then tonight as well. Have a wonderful and blessed week. God bless. Oops.
Once again, thank you so much for being with me. I'll see you next Wednesday at this time, 9 o'clock. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Be safe. God bless.